nice little bit at the end of the press conference. Yeah. And it was also done with humour, OK, with humour. So Justin Marshall joins us, 81 Test veteran of the All Blacks. And Justin sits there riding shotgun, calling the games on Sky as well, you know. Mate, you've had a couple of days to process this, so a little less emotion, a little less wow factor. What do we take, Marshy, from, from that win in your mind? Well, I think first and foremost was the execution of the All Blacks was absolutely near on to perfection, which is a, a massive positive for a side that had been struggling in areas like handling, uh, inefficiency at breakdown. Set piece in general has been pretty good, but in those sort of small micro elements of the game, they were very, very efficient on a difficult night. You know, a night that was difficult for handling, it was difficult to be accurate. You'd expect a few mistakes, but... You know, they, they were so close to perfection, it was ridiculous. So I think the other side of it, and, and everybody will probably uh, agree with this to, to a degree, is, is that Argentina were not the side that they were in Christchurch. Now, there's two places that you want to go with that, and that is either they were they were that way because they emotionally couldn't reach the heights that they did in Christchurch. Look, they'd climbed Everest. There's no doubt about it. You know, they're heroes in Argentina now because they had won a test match for the first time in their history, in our country. So for them to then get back up was never going to be easy. Um, so I, I, I suspected that they were slightly off. But the other part of the equation, which you've got to give the All Black credit for, is the credit that they didn't allow them to get to that level again. They, they completely shut them out of the game. Yeah, they didn't make them make the handling errors that they did. But still, the tackle efficiency, the All Blacks was amazing. And they forced them into a lot of those errors as well. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I can. I'm. I'm, I'm just uh, absorbing that at the moment, and I and I fully understand from a fan's point of view. Mm. I go down this road called isolate and separate, and it's one thing I love about the Poms and the way they do their sport, Marsha, is that when they get a victory, they don't care about what happened last week, next week, this week, the other week, last mm. year. They celebrate, and I'm still in that mode when you watch an All Black team play like that. As a fan, that's everything that you want. It's commitment, it's excellence, it's grit, it's niggle from Dane Coles, it's stuff you, one of those, take that. I mean, but what I don't want is I don't want us to be so desperate and painted into a goddamn corner that that's what produces those performances. And, and, that, and that is where the, the roller coaster has um, started, you know, for, I, I guess, the best part of a year now, where you get performances like that. But that's the expectation level. Look, I think I quite clearly said that to you after the Alice Park test, where I said, you know, the, the things that are happening in that All Black um, jersey at the moment, are, they are hurting me and they are stinging because, you know, his, history is being changed. But what I did say after Alice Park was, you know what, if we had dropped that test match, I still would have been uh, proud of that performance simply because they went out and played like All Blacks do. They went out and they wore the jersey with uh, mana, with respect, and they played the style of rugby that you expect All Blacks to play. And they threw the kitchen sink at the opposition. Now, if the opposition, for one way or another, uh, whether it be officials, whether it be the bounce of the ball, maybe they were just having a miraculous performance on the day, managed to win the test match, at least you can quite confidently say that the All Blacks gave it everything. They gave everything they've got, and they went out there and played like All Blacks. That's what's been the problem in the past, is that the performance in Christchurch was not all black-like. There, there were too many uh, areas of the game where they were just so far off. So now their big challenge is to make sure that they replicate that performance of Alice Park and uh, of Hamilton without the, the buttoning off, without dropping their guard, without uh, going back backwards massively. You know, you can go back with a test match, uh, Marty. Like, no doubt about it. You, you know, to repeat a performance like that with three years on, a, on an awful night, um, you know, isn't easy to do back to back. But you drop by five percent, you drop by ten percent, not forty or thirty percent, mm. and that's their challenge now. Justin Marshall's with us. Eighty-one tests for the All Blacks. As soon as you said that, um, uh, you know, just I don't know why, but it just flashed into my mind. I'm, I'm not going to compare the performances, but I think it was forty-three-six on that hideous day at Athletic Park. And you can remember this is in nineteen ninety-six, and then he played in that game, mate. And that, you know, just you know, when it's near perfection like that, you're playing in the wet. What happens? Do you, does it feel any different? Because does every pass just happen to stick? Have you always got somebody on your shoulder? Is that see what creates that kind of whatever it is in a team where everyone's on that same page? I think just your mindset is that you know you got to, you got to make sure that you know when that pass is coming your way or when you are the distributor, 
that, that you're 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 on the edge because you know the ball is slippery. So your pass has got to be it can't be on the shoulder. It can't be too far in front, or too far or too low or too high. As a ball carrier, you've got to make sure that you're very much concentrating on, on, on gathering that pass and then looking after it in the contact zone. So, yeah, I guess your senses to a degree are slightly heightened, um, but that shouldn't be any different to a dry day. And, and I guess for one way or another, the game does tighten up a bit, albeit, you know, I feel that the stadium at Hamilton is probably one of the arguably best yes. surfaces, if not the best surface in the country. And, Brilliant. You know, even even though there was a lot of rain, I felt that the, you know, that the surface helped the fact that the players were able to run run on top of the grass. You don't get the muddy, uh, horrible, boggy conditions like you did in the past. And and I certainly feel that the balls they they are a lot better nowadays. But you know, the All Blacks didn't play wet weather rugby to a degree. They they were tight when they needed to be. But when they had to execute and they, they punched holes or the, you know, the Caleb Clark try when they had to loop around from Rico Iwani off, off Sam Kane under pressure, really good pass, they got all of those things right. And, and I think they were just at that level on the weekend that they can be every week because they are good enough. And that's regardless of whether it's raining or not. Justin Marshall with us on the platform. All right, a couple of names that you've mentioned there. Sam Kane. Now, I, I was really um, fascinated by, well, not fascinated, I, I, I really applaud Artie's comments during the week. We had Dane Coles on the program. I asked him the same questions about Sam Kane. He was unequivocal in his support of him. And and I know there's been a lot of talk after this test match. Oh, we saw the real Sam Kane. Justin, I'd argue against that. I don't think we haven't not seen the real Sam Kane. I just think that he's become a scapegoat because he's a convenient scapegoat like Tane was at the time, you know, going back. You know, here's a guy that actually absolutely muscles up every week. We saw a couple of things on the weekend, did we not, where he cut people in half. But the thing that got me, mate, was it wasn't the try where he slipped in Geordie Barrett. I think it was the the one before that where, you know, Christie broke or Rico broke, Christie broke. The first guy to take the pass was the number seven. I mean, it just says an awful amount. Yep. He actually puts in the load, doesn't he? So your thoughts on that? Because you've been an all-black captain as well, mate. I mean, you know what kind of pressure the guy's under to remove all of that stress out of his head and, and just play like that. that. That was what was impressive to me. Look, no doubt about it, the toughest job in the world when it comes to rugby. You know, the, being the all-black captain is more difficult than captaining any other nation, simply because you are captaining basically the all-blacks for their history. And because of that, when things go wrong, then you're responsible and held responsible for, for that past. And, and that makes it difficult. That's a massive weight to have on your shoulders, and it's not easy. So there's no doubt that Sam Kane has had to bear that. And, and, and that's just the responsibility that comes with the job. But I certainly agree with you in the terms of the way that he's been playing. You know, he, his work rate is never questioned. He, he is always there. He was always working hard at the breakdown. He's always hitting people with both shoulders, and he likes to carry. I think what happened at the weekend was finally we're starting to see, because of consistency and selection, the back row starting to figure itself out. You know, I, I, we saw Artie Savier off the back of the scrum. I can't remember in four test matches previous where he took the ball off the back of the scrum and just made yards on his own. Um, he set up the try for, for Bowden Barrett. So all of a sudden, he's developed his game a little bit better. I certainly felt that Shannon Frizzell was a lot tighter at the weekend. He played more, I guess, closer to the ruck. He was in the pick-and-go mold. He was smashing people around there. He was cleaning a lot more rucks, which, which means Sam Kane can free himself up a bit and play a more balanced game. So... Yeah, certainly I don't, I, I don't concur with the fact he's been out of form. I just think he's been a victim of us trying to find our mojo. And I've talked about this a lot, that yeah. our balance is still yeah. not quite right in the back row. And I felt they went a long way at the weekend to starting to get that balance right. And he, out of all three of them, was the major uh, you know, benefactor of that. She's just still take him off when he's playing like that, though. I mean, he, you know, I know that he, he, you know, he does it with, with such grace and that, but I would have been gutted coming off with him. I mean, especially when the team's playing like that. Yeah, but I think it was in the same breath. You know, no one likes to be bought off the field when you think you've still got some fuel in the tank. But what I felt was great was, I think, you know, not only did all the, the viewing audiences on Sky, which would probably be up around the million, if not more people in the country, witnessed. But the you know the thirty odd thousand or twenty five thousand that was at the stadium, all of them got to their feet yeah. and applauded Sam Kane. They they'd not only seen the game that he had produced, but I think everybody just wanted to give him that support. Now, he wouldn't have got that at the final whistle because he gets caught up in interviews and that. But he had that moment where he walked off. He acknowledged the crowd, but the crowd acknowledged him more. Everybody on their feet and applauded 
the All Black captain for the performance he put in, and uh, I thought that was really fitting for him. Justin Marshall with us on the platform as says every Monday. I'm just looking back at the rugby from over the weekend, obviously. Now, you were a, well, I would, I'd would actually say you were a quality debater on the field, and I would rate Dane Coles as perhaps one of the most professional debaters in world rugby. I loved what he came on and brought, mate. It was just so typical of him, just a good bit of niggle. I mean, you must have loved it as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you need, you actually do need an element of that, a little bit of what we call that, that little bit of mongrel. And he's old school, Dane Coles. And, you know, look, put it this way. I, I watched... Uh, you know, with interest, his introduction to the test match against uh, Ireland and Wellington. I watched him go on, and within a minute and a half, I swear on my life, within a minute and a half, he lined up uh, Johnny Sexton. He ran straight at him, fair play to Johnny Sexton, managed to get him to the ground. And then Dane Coles got up and used Johnny Sexton's face uh, with his hand, basically to get himself up off the ground and gave it a real good rub into the ground. <laughs> Sexton's hands went flailing around flailing around and he was looking up and he was saying something. Obviously, I couldn't hear what that was and, and Coles, he gave him something back. But I guarantee you, the next time that Dane Coles was either going to tackle or run at Johnny Sexton, he's thinking about what Coles is going to do and it slightly puts you off. And you, you need that nibble factor. You need people out there getting under the opposition's skin because the more that you can shake them off their rhythm, the better. And yeah, no doubt that's part of Coles' game, but Again, he's also got that, you know, he's set up a try not long after he is on. He's got that dynamic factor that we know so well in his game, a hooker that can play like a wing. Um, you know, it was great to see him back out there because I think he still off, has a hell of a lot to offer the All Blacks. A couple of quick questions, we'll let you go. I know you get busy as always. Aaron Smith came off after 50 minutes this time. So it's starting to, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a conspiracy theorist from way back, you know that. It's starting to appear to me that this is a pattern, and when a pattern occurs, there is obviously a thought and a plan behind it. I mean, I'm not convinced anymore that this is just random that this happens. This is It's obvious that they only want him to play 50 or 60 minutes. Yeah, look, I certainly feel that there's probably two parts to that. The, the fact that they they will be wary that he will have heavy legs. He plays, a, he plays a lot of minutes anyway, Aaron Smith, and has played a lot of minutes in his career to date, you know, over 100 caps. And, you know, he, he isn't getting any younger, Aaron Smith. He still has massive amounts of energy, and he can, he can quite comprehensively play 80 minutes each week. But I... I also feel there's also a little element of a change up there, showing something different. You know, Christie plays slightly differently. Uh, so I feel that there's also a development part there as well. Look, if, at the end of the day, Marty, if Aaron Smith was to, and, and you know, touch wood that this doesn't happen, fall over with a major injury, there's no test experience in Finley Christie or Falau Fakataba, who are the two other halfbacks in the side. When you take Brad Weber out of the mix and TJ Perinara out of the mix, we're real green right. in that position. Okay, so I, yeah. I think they also feel that they need to give these guys, giving them 10 minutes is just not enough. 15 minutes is not enough. Giving them 30 minutes to work out a game, sometimes the games will be in the balance, is great for them, great for their experience and, and the growth in that position. All right, let's go across the ditch then. Ala Alator and Itzabeth. Oh, just the pictures alone were just... I mean, that was a manic, maniacal face, wasn't it, from the big South African boy? Yeah. But I liked seeing, you know, the dressing room afterwards. You've done all this, and so you're the best to explain it to us. Look, it's men bashing against other men. There's emotion, there's physicality, there's macho, yeah. there's posturing, there's all of that kind of stuff. No punches needed to be thrown there. You could see what was going on in both of their faces. I love the fact that afterwards they're shaking hands, giving each other a bit of a rub, and then having a beer afterwards. Brilliant. Yeah, and that's rugby. And that's something that rugby has retained from its amateur status and also from club rugby. That, that, that's what rugby is all about. Yes, you're not in the, in the club rooms up, upstairs, downstairs, wherever it might be of, of the opposition club and, and, and making sure you support their club and have a beer with, with their players. But even in the professional environment, that's what the game is all about. Nothing, nothing gets taken off the field. It's all about going out there, being competitive, having that fight and will to win but also making sure that you can sit down and have a beer afterwards. And, and that's a tradition of the game that I feel we have over many other professional sports that they don't have. You know, you watch the football teams or whatever. And no, we'll get up and leave, mate. We'll go. They, yeah. That's right. They, 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 they go, they get in their fancy cars, and they don't socialise. Rugby does. And that used to be the case when I played. You know, the, I used to have a raging full-on battle many, many times with George Gregan, and he'd be the first person I'd walk into and have a beer with afterwards, regardless 
of who won. And he was the same to me with all of those players across the board. Even the English, mate. Oh. Even the English. Oh. Can you believe it? Oh. Bloody hell. <laughs> 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 oh, tell you what, and that's safe to go. No, no, no. All right. Um, let's finish. Um, with We've got to repeat this against Australia. It's remarkable to me that every test series in this championship, we've all won two, we've lost two. What does that mean? That we're all stuffed, mm. we're all getting better, we're all hopeless, we're all actually on the emperor. I don't know what it means. It means it's bloody competitive is what it means, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And, you know, all, all the teams are trying to find their mojo at the moment and they're going through ups and downs and, and massive uh, roller coasters. And, and it's really interesting that it's not just the All Blacks, you know. So, you know, these teams that are even ranked above us, like South Africa, are having off weekends and then on weekends. So it's made it interesting. It's made it great for the viewing public out there because you used to go into some of these test matches already knowing what the result was going to be. It was just how many points the team was going to win by. Well, now... That, that, that has certainly changed. The demographic is different. Um, so it makes for a compelling viewing, which is, which is brilliant for the game. Not great for our history, but I'm sure the All Blacks are on, on the right pathway to making sure that that happens. So, yeah, brilliant uh, test match coming up in a couple of weeks' time um, in Melbourne and uh, more drama to come for sure. But tune in because it'll be worth watching.